and three, two, one, boom, and we're back with another episode of Scratch Gamers. This is Scratch Dialogue. We are back at it after a little recap of Egypt, cool things that happened. Mm-hmm. I thought that was one of our coolest podcasts to date. Oh yeah. I even wrote that in like the the share thing. I was like, one of our most epic podcasts. Huh. But I thought, yeah, just because pyramids are so epic. Right. Yeah. So uh, this is a nerd recap. We're just going to be checking out things that we thought uh, while I was gone. Some cool stuff got released. Um, trailers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All that fun stuff. So first on the docket, we got uh, Death Stranding. It just came out yesterday? Yes. Yep. Okay, cool. So um, <clears throat> if you want to check it out, Vish streamed some of the game well just an hour just an hour of it uh so Last we're gonna night. get his initial impressions on death stranding go initial impressions yeah uh, what, what do you think or like what'd you do i don't know give me a little update so uh still a lot of confused don't well don't know what i'm doing yet because it's all i uh, in the one hour that i played i think a lot of that was cutscenes. oh okay that well, we know did, of okay since so, Kojima does that. so did did you see the um I, I saw this thing like on Facebook. It said like Kojima is gonna start doing movies. Yeah. Yeah. So it makes sense if this was like a giant cutscene. So it was like an hour long cutscene. No, so no, 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 not an hour long. Movie. I did have a little bit of uh, like gameplay, but I didn't really do much other than just walking around and picking up the delivery things that dropped. Okay. That so what, what is what is the like initial premise about like what's the what's the game? Do uh, we know yet or no? Uh, well, I did watch the reviews and things, so what we do know but is... But I mean, for, like, you, like, what did what did you learn? Yet? Nothing. Oh, literally nothing? So, like, it just, like, started... Yeah. You spent that... an hour doing, like, nothing, and the game hasn't even begun. No, uh, no like, title screen? Well, the, yeah, there's a title screen in the beginning. Oh, okay. Uh, but then, we like, to, to know what I'm doing yet, I don't know yet. Other than... Or, like, what the story's about, all that stuff? Uh, right now, in the game, no. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah. Wow. So a full hour in, it still leaves you in the dark. Uh, yeah. Like it just kind of really just started. So is it like is it a super long game? I know you said like fifty hours, but is, that's like uh, a in the su- 50? okay. So it depends on how you want to look at it. So if you yeah. want uh to just do uh the story, you probably could finish that. Uh, maybe I don't know if that's exactly thirty hours or not, but like something it'll be less than that. But like to get that's it fully completed, I would say yeah. Uh, some they were saying it's like about fifty hours because. So, uh, it's like a, um, <laughs> the joke that's going around, it's more like a walking simulator because you're trying to deliver, you're not really walking all the time, but like you are, <laughs> that's you so are funny. a walking sim. <laughs> that's, I've never heard of a game like that before, but that's, that's pretty jokes. Okay, cool. Yeah. So it's like you're doing deliveries and things. So you don't have to do all those side missions if you, you, you don't have to. Right. Uh, but for some people that really did enjoy, enjoy that kind of thing will enjoy this a lot. Okay, cool. Um, to put that into perspective, mm-hmm. um, Uncharted is like an eight-hour game. Yeah. And like we finished that in one night. Yeah. I fell asleep every time we tried to do it. But <laughs> um, yeah, I remember finishing that one night. So like, but that was a long game. You know, uh, we like we ran through that game too. It was like on easy mode and still it took yes. us a whole night. So yeah, like, like the... three nights of that. Like, yeah. you know, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that one was like a linear game too, whereas I'm sure this one's like, you said it was open world? Yeah, so, it's, it's kind of like open world. Uh, yeah, you're basically, world. like this is from the reviews. So you're basically trying to connect all of America together, right? Oh, okay, cool. After whatever has but happened. But you know what's weird about like the, the term open world? If you go If you go back to like when video games first started, open world literally meant open world, where it's like, we're not going to tell you where things, like Final Fantasy VII, open yeah. world. We're not going to tell you where things are. You got to remember where it is. And if you don't remember, you got to search the goddamn whole world. Yeah. You know? But like, open world today is like waypoints. So it's like, it's mm-hmm. an open world, but you got a waypoint. So it's like, we're just going to show you where to go. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, those reason, the reason those things have happened is probably because there's a lot of complaints. Like, where do we go? Like that's... I guess, but... It, I it, kind of like it that could mean old school. In, yeah, but it could mean gaming. two things, right? Even old school, it's like you're making these games for the first time, so you don't know what are what works and what doesn't oh, work. Oh, like in terms of UX? Yeah, like you're accepting it as if that's how it should be. Right, 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 right. But I see then what you're yeah, maybe yeah, true, that's true, true. just like in these designs, we didn't think about these sort of things. So I wonder if like 
in terms of difficulty, the games are getting simpler, but in terms of dexterity, the games are getting more difficult. So do, do you get what I'm saying? So like yeah. there's more buttons now. Mm-hmm. So that's what makes it difficult. But like in terms of difficulty to figure things out, that that's like laxing. So it's mm-hmm. more about your skill versus your critical thinking. Right. You know. Well, I guess there's critical thinking when you play new video games. Yeah. Yeah, but a lot of them, so like sometimes what happens, I mean, especially with bigger games, it's like you, if you've played enough games, it just becomes second you nature know totally, what you're doing totally, totally. Kind of, yeah but I, fe- telling I feel like we we grew up in like the the perfect point of like no no technology and technology so it's like mm-hmm. you, you kind of learn how to like learn whereas like people who have actually mm-hmm. that's that's hard to say because i i didn't grow up with tech well i grew up with tech during my adolescence but not like not like babies now they can use ipads Right, yeah, I mean, they're being more better than us. So they might be more better, or they won't know how to problem-solve, like, problems. They'll be like, how come this tech's not working? It should be working correctly from the jump. You know what I'm saying? But we we went Mm -hmm. through the iterations where it's like, we saw the incremental improvements, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think. So, like, we had to learn how to problem-solve. So it's like, if the modem's not working, it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, what can I do to figure out how to fix this modem? I still think that there, that is there with new tech. Um, you think like it's still like um, it's not making people like lazy with tech I think there it can be for some but I think there are areas where if people do go in that direction there there's a lot more things to learn as well like there are some new tech that you would still yeah yeah like the things I was doing on Twitch uh, with the with the commands you know Mm -hmm. like how you would pop up like those are some things you would need to Kind of, it's not you're not doing much to do add it, but it's like where do you go and add that? You're kind of learning on your own, right? But what I'm saying is like but those are all we, for new people. Gr- growing up, growing up in the age where you had to learn tech in our adolescence, it's yeah. like it's second nature to figure it out. But it's like if you are born into tech, my question is, do you take it for granted? So you expect like a specific level of UX. Uh, user experience yeah maybe it might depend if maybe if you have apple maybe that's what you're but, saying but that's true though that that's why yeah. there are courses called ux right yeah you're, you're developing um systematic ways that are intuitive for people but like there was no intuitiveness when we were younger because everything was new so yeah, it's like yeah. you had to f- relearn multiple different platforms because mm-hmm. everything was different yeah you know yeah. per there wasn't like a standard like if you if you see now to, I guess like that's making it better but like um, if you see now today like the power button symbol symbol is like yeah. the same generally you know what I mean like if you see that logo you're like oh this must be power or like oh if I push the center button I must go to the home screen mm-hmm. you know yeah 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 right yeah, that's weird it, it just reminds me of like the, the book I'm reading the permanent record the uh, Edward Snowden book mm-hmm yeah, because he talks a lot about that stuff and, like, how during... Because he's, like, only a few years older than us. Uh, he was saying that, like, his generation is the hackers because yeah. they had to learn how right. to hack yeah, uses. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. when things just came Well, yeah, out, that was... Uh, it, that's right? the thing, yeah. Like, there was... Everything was new for us, right? And that's what I'm saying. So yeah. it's, like, we're the hacker generation yeah. where it's, like, all right, learn it mm-hmm. versus, like, how come it doesn't work? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, cause like, I feel like the generation of today is, like, how come it doesn't work? Mm-hmm. You know? Like, it should be up to my UX expectations and standards. Whereas before, it was, like, there were no expectations and standards. It was the Wild West. So it's, like, you had to learn on the fly. Right. You know? That's what made us hackers. Right. Um, but anyways, yeah. So Death Stranding. Oh, yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah. Only an hour in. It's still lots to, mm-hmm. lots to see, lots to learn. And what really um, am I doing in this world? That's what I'm still. Uh, it's it's such a far around. departure from uh, Kojima's original games. Like one yeah. of the first games that really influenced me was Metal yeah. Gear Solid. Right. Uh, not. Uh, it's it's not the. Um, it's like Metal Gear Solid three or four. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the first Metal Gear Solid. So like when I first played Metal Gear Solid for PlayStation with like Solid Snake and stuff, um, that wasn't the first in the series. Apparently, the first was a Game Boy game. And then if you go back and try to play it, it's like trash. But like all the characters are referenced from the original Game Boy game. Mm-hmm. You know, that was his like masterpiece until he got like kicked out. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. He he was known for that, but that's. Uh, but then there are restrictions in his. Maybe he wanted 
like this one is where he's just free to do what he wanted to do, right? Without any kind of real restrictions. But it's funny because if you look at Metal Gear Solid um, Patriot, Sons of Our Patriots, with uh, where they switched out Solid Snake for like this guy came called Raiden, um, you can see, you know how it's like very sick and twisted? Mm-hmm. You could see that that was already where it was going. Like he was trying to push Metal Gear Solid in a very sick and twisted way, mm-hmm. which I found very interesting. Like that's what made the game very unique. But like, um, so a small example was uh, near the end of the game when it was like, you've been playing too long. Turn it off, Jack. You know, and you're like, I was like, what the, what's going on? <laughs> it was like psychological and I freaked because it was like three in the morning. I used to play video games like nonstop. And then like, I, I shut it off because I was freaked out because I was like, wait, has the timer been going on too long? <laughs> like, and then I played it again in the morning. It's like, it's the same thing. It was like, oh, okay. This is like Kojima's sick and twisted way yeah, of like, yeah, yeah. you know? And like the whole thing was about conspiracies of like our government's tricking us. Mm. But that was during that like 9-11 time period, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So like it made it like made was, sense. Yeah. Yeah. So like this new one seems pretty sick and twisted as well. Not to say that he's sick and twisted, but like. Yeah, but it's know. it's also. Uh, it's, it's I, I, I think time. the message also is about connecting. I feel like. like oh really? From yeah. what I'm getting from the interviews. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Even though it's that there those there's weird things happening or whatever, uh-huh. or it's like a weird world, but it's also about connecting after. Connecting all. back to who we are. Uh, yeah, and so some, I think so. It, it's really cool, uh, Chris Ryan. I don't know if you saw that Joe Rogan podcast with Chris Ryan. So I, I cut up no. the clip of it, and it was it was interesting because because I totally agree with this. Actually, I was in the car when I heard when I heard him say it. I was like, yes, you get it. So like, the the story of the hero's journey is like one of the ones that we all. It, it's like what every mythological story is based upon, mm-hmm. where it's like you go away on this journey. You learn a bunch of things, then you come back home. Yeah. Right? And then you, like, take your new experiences, and then, like, you appreciate your life where you are. Mm-hmm. Right? So, like, he's saying that as society, we've been <clears throat> we've been on our own journey, whereas, like, we've been pushing towards technology, right? We've been separating ourselves from nature. Yeah. But then if you look at where we are today in contemporary society, we're trying to get back to nature. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, yeah. we're, we're pushing right. towards, like... Um, you know, like nature, nature remedies, mm-hmm. like more mental health days, you know, like trying to, people are hunting now, you know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I would see this more for the Western. The Western world, yeah, because we, we went on that departure and then we're coming back, Yeah, you know. We left nature only to realize that we are nature and to come back and like, like mm-hmm. bring nature and what we think nature was together, right. you know, yeah. technology technology and nature becoming one now mm-hmm. and it sounds like from the game that that's where it's headed i don't know yeah because like sep- we're all maybe. about separation I'm then now we're going back towards like sure. yeah i don't know yet maybe next time i'll tell you but uh maybe yeah it's possible yeah that i think that's i think so yeah but it's also like uh, because of what's like happening solar, like think about like green energy mm-hmm. you know that's basically merging nature with well i don't know about tech. yeah i'm not uh, we're, we're going more towards that is what right. he's proposing yeah, I, yeah i totally yeah. agree it's like that's why tesla is so popular yeah you know right yeah uh i'm i don't like uh i'm not too sure if that's what he means but like kojima or this guy? yeah yeah, the kojima. Oh, yeah uh in the, i think it's more in a sense like today's time how we're sep- like we're arguing and shit a lot separating like in separating yourselves yeah, yeah yeah totally yeah so like in that way maybe i guess is what you're trying to say yeah yeah like we're we're we went so far in the direction of separation and we got to come back to like a communal yeah thing. yeah that's cool yeah yeah but overall you like it so far uh at the moment yeah at the moment yeah but, that's cool uh, <laughs> i don't know it doesn't seem like my game that i want to play so but like, uh yeah that's the other thing i was going to say like i don't think this is generally going to be uh for everyone oh really or for maybe a lot of people oh really okay saying. true yeah. uh it's it's not like a hack and slash shoot them up no if really? you yeah it's not about that if you like waiting around <laughs> get this game <laughs> right yeah i it's not gonna be it even though it's like a big uh, mainstream, uh, like a blockbuster type of game, but it's I feel like it's more, it's that with the feel of an indie, right? Okay, that's what you're saying. Because uh, there's not a lot of uh, like new kind of games going in this direction. Okay, cool. 
cool. So it's like to have, you know, spend that kind of money to make something interesting or different. Right. Is uh, not something that you see often. So that's kind of where I give it a lot of props, I guess, mainly. Because it's like, it's like pioneering. Yeah. Hmm, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Or else, yeah, it's, yeah, well, yeah, it's, I don't think it'll be generally for a lot of people, though. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Actually, to, to circle back on um, the, the like, leaving and then coming back home and then realizing, like, you, where you started is where you wanted to be. Mm-hmm. So, um, even like, we were talking about this before the podcast, but, like, it's interesting that prior to, like, when I was a kid, I was all into, like, bracelets and, like, yeah. all this stuff, like, mm-hmm. um, amulets. Like, in Philippines, they call it, like, enting and tings, which are, like, special... <laughs> amulets that like protect you and stuff right so like i was always on the search for that kind of stuff as like a kid i always like wear things that like felt like they boosted me Mm -hmm. obviously placebo effect right yeah um and then i went on that journey of like realizing oh nothing is real like life is just a story you tell yourself Mm -hmm. so like there is nothing to these amulets right and then now in the physical way in the physical in the actual like scientific sense you know but then like coming back now after like more exploration it's like okay so if life is a story you tell yourself then it's about the placebos that are going on so it's like i start wearing them again it's like mm-hmm. yeah because because it it was a placebo i'm just tapping into the placebo power but i know it's a placebo you know saying like it's weird that we can do that to ourselves we know it's not real but like it gives us a sense of something which right like supercharges our energy mm-hmm. it's like placebos are very real you know yeah but then that's the the circling back it's like you you were there wearing that stuff you left to be like no i don't need this stuff to just come back and be like oh well i liked it right you know what i mean yeah. like i feel like that's that's the circle of life all the time like we're always trying to like we're when we're kids we're our purest self and then over time you start adding these different layers of like i gotta be this i don't want to be this and like you know these mm-hmm. like these obstacles and then you just jump back to who you were as a kid which is unobstructed you know? Right. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, so, Knights of the Old Republic. It's not Knights of the Old Republic. It's a Jedi Order. Is it, it Fallen Order? Uh, I'm not sure. Let me just check. Uh, Jedi Fallen Order. Yes. <laughs> so we checked that out. Oh, we saw the trailer for that. That's coming out this week? Ne- yeah, next Friday. It will. Cool. Today is Saturday, so yeah. The Friday. Next Friday. Yeah, so... One week. That... Um, it looks really good. So I, I, I think for that, uh, there's been a lot of, I think, wait for, like, a good Star Wars game, like, story way, story mode. Oh, yeah, for sure. So this one looks like it's really good. I'm waiting on the reviews. Probably coming out next week, I would Ooh. assume. One of my favorite games uh, of all time was Knights of the Old Republic. So this this So which one me. was that one? Yeah. Uh, it was, like... I don't know. I don't know if you were playing them at the time, but basically you created a guy... Well, there was, like, different versions of the game, so, like... Mm. Um, is it online-based, or...? No, 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 it was, like... Why is this one online? No, no, no. No, it's, 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 it's like, a story. Okay. And, like, basically, you create a character, and then you, you had to remember who you were, because you had amnesia. Okay. And then it turns out, like, you're, you're like, this Jedi or Sith Lord. Oh, okay. You, know, you had these, like, Jedi powers. You're, like, the chosen one or something. Mm-hmm. But, like, the gameplay was really cool because it was, like, open world and you were, like, a Jedi. So you could use your powers and, like... So, like, you'd be in a conversation and it would be, like, do you want to use a Jedi mind trick right now? Right. And then, like, if you had unlocked that power... Oh, I see. You could be, like... You can use your Jedi mind trick to, like, mm. advance the conversation in a specific way. Okay. It was, I think, RPG, but, like, Star Wars. Right? Like, okay. Like... Kind right, of Witcher, right. kind of like Witcher. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. The video game, but like Star Wars. So when I saw the trailer for this, I was like, oh, it looks looks the same, which I'm excited about because I, I wouldn't play it. Like, I don't know. I've turned my like life into like video game where it's like the things I'm creating are my video game now. It's mm-hmm. so, like I wouldn't yeah. find time for it, right? But I'm stoked for this game. It looks really good. Yeah, I'm waiting. If the reviews are good, I will get it. It's just that EA is the one that's making the game, so I'm not too sure. Yeah, EA is the one who made the original Knights of the Little Public. Yeah, but EA is, like, in recent times have had a lot of issues. Sloppiness. Yeah. Maybe they brought back the original team. Uh, I, I don't know about that, but just in general. It, no, I mean, uh, original oh. team for Knights of the Little Republic. Yeah, no, no, I know, I know what you're saying, but I don't know about that. 
Yeah, it looked it looked really cool. You it like, looked cool. Um, it looked cool. Uh, I did like I do like that kind of like story mode kind of thing. So. Yeah, me too. So I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah. Do we know any of the storyline for it? Uh, no, I haven't really looked into that. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, from what the trailer is, it's like you're you're taking a stand. You're like a lost Jedi or something, or like trying to bring back the Jedi Order. I think some yeah, it feels like that could be it. But um, other than that, like I don't know too much about the story. Um, but there seems like to be a lot of hype around it, so yeah, might do well. If mm-hmm. it is good, I do want it to do well. Then we can get more of these kinds of things. Because there was uh, like since Disney bought Star Wars, they've been trying to uh, uh, to make games. And a lot there was a game uh, like a couple of weeks ago that got that got canceled. Right. Right. And then something happened. Remember, like those guys, or even though, like in the movie or something that would, that's something to do with Star Wars. Then the guys that did uh, Game of Thrones, like then they. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, they, they made like the last, um, the last episode, last season of Game of Thrones. Well, they made all the seasons of Game of Thrones. Oh, they did. Yeah. Oh, okay. And and then it was like it seemed really rushed because they were trying to yeah uh, and jump then, to the Star Wars exactly. And then all this, like now. They're out of that. They're not doing that Star Wars. Really? <laughs> yeah. They, they, they. Oh no, I didn't see this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they were. So that's not. I'm not sure if they, they like go of or just probably because they're like, oh, look at how crappy you made Game of Thrones. Or maybe, or they didn't get a so, good story idea. I don't know. Not too sure which wow. one it was, but like something happened. Uh, so they got booted uh, off the project. Yeah. Wow, sucks. I believe even a, some game was canceled too. I think. Uh, see, that's the thing. You gotta ago. always do your best in everything because you don't know how your terrible actions will affect you in the future. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. like, yeah. like, last season of Game of Thrones was so trash. Yeah, everyone says that. And, and then and now we know why. And then and then it's like, oh, well, you got booted off your own project. Ha ha. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 So you tried to cut a corner, and then that just bit you in the end. Mm. Yeah. So fascinating. Um, I was going to say something. But in, yeah, I'm excited to play. Uh, my again, I'm waiting for the reviews. Then I will get the game. That's yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, but you still gotta beat Death Stranding. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. Or you gotta beat Witcher. Uh, I'll wait for the for the show. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the show, yeah, um, Netflix is dropping Witcher December. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty excited to see that. I, I, like, I think everyone's anticipation in that was waiting for that trailer and that voice. Is this voice gonna match the video game? The what we played in the video game. Yeah. And it did. When it I did. heard it too, I was like, "But you know, it's funny because I hated the voice in the video game. So when he used it, I was like, "Ah, <laughs> oh, goddamn it!" <laughs> so the thing is, uh, what I learned like throughout the interviews as they were trying to promote all this in, uh, I think, Comic Con and stuff. Uh, this guy, uh, Henry Cavill, right? Yeah, Henry yeah. Cavill is a huge Witcher fan. Witcher fan. Really? He plays the games. Wow. He plays. It. He was the one that pushed for him uh, to be jacked, to be chosen. Oh, to play Gerald. He wanted or to be Gerald. Ch- so he was like, "I'm going to petition for me to become Gerald." Yeah. Oh, sick. Gerald. That's cool. Is he is he a producer or anything? I'm not too sure oh. if he's on that. But they, yeah, they they didn't really go to him first. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, su- surprising. Um, it, it's interesting that he's a a big fan of it. Yeah. Because they said. Um, Seven seasons? I, I don't think you saw that, but no, I saw I didn't. the article. It's like the writers have seven seasons worth of story. Like they've already created it, the right. arc. Okay. So it's like if the first one does well, then they can continue on. Like it's sort of like you know that everything's going to be tied together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because if you've written seven seasons worth, then you know that it's all linked. Right. Versus like you're, yeah. you're trying to add stuff on later on. Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, you're like reaching here. Sort of like the uh, Game of Thrones series, you know? It's yeah. like... It's like everything was already written, so it's like everything's already interlinked. So yeah, this one, the so they're getting a lot of the stories not from the game, but from from the books, which which was surprising because I didn't know that. I don't know if many people do know that yet, but it's it was a book first. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I really like it when um, they take. I mean, like I'm excited for this because Game of Thrones was so. Like mm-hmm. well received yeah. and this book was well received so it's like yeah it wasn't written in english right it's not an english book yeah it's german or something 
uh, Norwegian maybe Norwegian, or yeah. like I, I don't know something somewhere on the that area <laughs> yeah. of uh, in, uh, Europe it, it's it's a tough call because sometimes book adaptions aren't very good yes yeah. but Game of Thrones is so good and hearing that uh, Henry Cavill's a fan so it's like you know he's gonna be pushing for for like uh, quality yeah you know? I, I think so I hope so at least yeah um also, I, I saw in a different article that it's not going to be... The horror isn't going to be monster horror, necessarily. It's going to be human horror. So it's more more grounded in mm-hmm. realism than monsters. But there were some monsters in there. Because the, you no, do kind of have there to were, have there, that, right? No, totally, totally, totally. But what I'm saying is like... the More big, focus of it. Like the, the big enemy isn't going to be monsters. It's going to be humans. Right, yeah. So I'm stoked for that because that was sort of like Game of Thrones where it was like, like people inspired, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Stoked! I I might binge watch that one. Yeah, I, I was like, uh, it was it was a couple of weeks ago too. I was thinking, when are they? Because they they said it was going to come out this year. I was like waiting for the trailer. When are they coming out? It's almost November. Mm. And then, in the beginning, yeah. Then last week, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of Game of Thrones, Succession. Uh, it's like the. It's like the Game of Thrones real life version. It's like um. Right. So if you've if you're listening to this and you haven't seen Succession, it's a um, HBO show. HBO? Yes. Yeah, it's an HBO show. You can get on Crave. Apparently not around the world because when we were traveling, we tried to watch it and we couldn't Well, if you it. have HBO, you probably can. Oh, so how come we can access it? Because it's, it, it's, uh, they have a deal with Crave here. Oh, Okay. So you can. Oh, Crave got it, got is, it. Is Crave a, was a distributor. Is a bell thing. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, and that's what you meant about geotagging. Yes. It's like yeah, you, yeah. you could tell that we, we weren't in Canada, so we couldn't watch it. Yeah, if, if uh, HBO had their own app and got it, got it, got uh, was, it, got it, got it was available around other areas in the world, yeah, then it would you work. Check it out. Anyway, so. Like Netflix. Right, right, right. So but it, also Netflix is geotagged too, right? Certain things are not shown there yeah i was trying to download so if it's so, of like, oh, so it's, if it's netflix on oh, show you can watch them but if it's um and if nothing if it's netflix or original you can watch them if it's anything else uh, it's based on the right whatever they can get mm, property or rights of in in those countries right right right. so you'll see probably in the uk you'll see more of the uk shows right 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 uh you won't see that here in canada so like that yeah um so so anyways the show is about um, a media company, the fourth largest or third largest? The fourth. Media company? Uh, f- fourth, maybe? I, I, I don't remember, sure. actually. All right, so <laughs> it, it's like, I'm pretty sure it's the fourth. So it's the fourth largest media company. Their family, it's about their family, and yeah. uh, the father is going through some issues, uh, health related issues. So they're trying to boot him off. Mm-hmm. This is season one we're talking about. So season two has already happened, if people have seen that, but. Yeah, we're talking about season one. Yeah, season one. So um, definitely worth checking out. I love how they make these things so um, exciting, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's mundane. So like <laughs> like yesterday's episode that we saw was uh, they're trying to kick the, the dad off the company, right? A vote yeah. of no confidence. Yeah. But the way they made it seem was like they were trying to kill him. It seemed like one of those like Shakespearean plays. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. like it was set in a um, modern business meeting. Business meeting. Yeah. You know, and the dad was like, oh, this is your attempt to kill me? And then it was so close because <laughs> you're like, it's just, it's about voting rights. So if he got outvoted, he would not be yeah. the leader anymore. And then like the Trump card was the brother. Mm-hmm. You know, major spoilers for this. Uh, the Trump card was the brother and then the brother ended up siding with the father because yeah. of pressure yeah. though. Yeah. He got pressured into it. Yeah. And then, um, and then the dad was like, this is your best shot. <laughs> right. And then he's like, you're all fired. Who yeah. voted against me? Yeah. And I was like, damn, that was like a, it was almost like a war. We were watching a war, but it was like a business meeting. Right. I love the directors for this. This is like pro. You should definitely check it out if you're uh, into like, like contemporary stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, I think uh, it was a huge show. It came out in the la- during the last season of like what, what of Game of Thrones. Like it was oh, okay. uh, around that time. Yeah, like when the first season was out. Yeah, yeah. So better than Game of Thrones. Um, I'd yeah. say so. I like it. 
I'm really into like business stuff. Well, if you take so. into the whole consideration of where Game of Thrones ended, sure. Um, if we we don't know how Succession will end, right? So right, right, true, true, true. Yeah. But at the moment, it's really good. Yeah. You know, it's interesting how we we don't realize your education is how you're going to see the world. It like sets you up for framing. Mm-hmm. You know, so like a lot of the stuff for a long time there, because I, I had only recently um, joined the like contemporary working world. Um, and like prior to that, I thought everyone saw the world the same way I had seen it mm-hmm. because I was in business school. So everyone thinks the same way. Right. Only to like join contemporary society and be like, oh, not everyone sees it in a business lens. Yeah. You know, Um and then it got me thinking, like, if I was a doctor, what would my lens be? Or, like, an engineer, what would my lens be? Mm-hmm. You know? Everything, every time we talk about the reason why I like succession is because I, I always look at life through a business lens. Right. You know? So, like, for me, it's very relatable. Mm-hmm. But, like, I wonder if, like, as an engineer, you're, like, you find that stuff boring. You know what I mean? It's, like, it kind of, like, it, you're, you're not yeah. presented with the full information of like why things are a certain way, but if we watch like an engineering show, you'd have more of a leg up than me, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think we take for granted yeah. our education. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, we we don't realize what an impact our education has mm-hmm. played on not only the way we see the world, but who we are. Yeah. You know? So like, I think that, I think in that way, it does come into like how much more you may appreciate something. Yeah, totally. Yeah, uh, yeah for sure. For sure. I, I I can remember there's not many shows that talk about engineering or things like that. So there was one movie that did. Do you remember okay. the Tom Hardy movie that was? Uh, he's just in the car driving. No. And uh, it's all about taking the phone. Like it was the only people who were talking oh, yeah, to yeah, was yeah, on the yeah, call. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that one, that. Yeah, and he was yeah, yeah. he was like a concrete guy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he was yeah. talking about what yeah, what they need, and I knew what he was talking about. Right. So that made me like it more. Exactly. Exactly. Totally. Totally. Yeah. But I I saw it. I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. I know. Like, I know. It would see, just yeah. See, <laughs> fascinating, right? Yeah. See, like you take it for granted. We don't even think about like yeah. how our program. There's this uh, book called The Culture Code, yeah. and what it what it says is like the thing that I took the most from the book is um, our culture is yeah. our first bit of framing. Mm-hmm. Like framing oh, yeah. is like yeah. um, how you see the world, right? How you see the world. So yeah. like, um, but like to put it into like a psychology, because I remember this example from Psych. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like framing is like your your descriptor mm-hmm. for an object, right? Right. So like you can frame it as um, we had a twenty percent loss. Or we had an eighty percent increase. Mm-hmm. They mean the exact same thing, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's how you take how you, yeah. a loss or a gain, right? Right, and you frame it according to the person that you're in front of, mm-hmm. right? So it's like if I want you to think negatively, I'm like, oh, we had a twenty percent loss. <laughs> yeah, like, damn, bro. <laughs> but then if you're like, I want to, I want to make it like positive. Oh, we had an eighty percent increase this year. Yeah. Oh, great, great, great. Right. You know, it's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. But it's like which end because eighty twenty the. Both equal 100, mm-hmm. but it's like, how am I going to present the information to you? So that's yeah. what framing is. Yeah. So culture essentially is our first bit of framing. You know, mm-hmm. how you're brought up is your framing to this world. And like, I think that we take for granted education in terms of that because our education is our framing. Right. You know, where you go to school frames you for the future. Mm-hmm. You know, what you learn frames you for the future. And to put this more like um, related back to my experiences, um, when we went on the Egypt trip, Mm -hmm. I was asking like so many economic questions, you know? And then I had to tell the tour guide, I was like, I studied this in school. That's why I'm like asking you all of these like economics related Mm -hmm. questions versus like, how were the pyramids built? It was just like, why would they have created the pyramids? What source of income is related to the development of them? You know what I mean? It was like very different questions, Mm -hmm. but it's like, that was my framing. Right. Yeah. Interesting, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I wanted to add, like, uh, it just is a random thing that, like, I read yesterday. Uh, so, like, we all think, like, we all see, like, um, like, oh, they, this movie made a million or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, oh, we think movies that have big budgets will go very, like, profit-wise, they'll make a lot of money, right? Right, right. So, like, you know, like, the Avengers ones and, 
like being about 200 to 300 million dollars but to you make. had to pay back pay back your costs yeah 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 so even though they made a billion it's like profit wise not as high it, totally so it, that's something that's not really it, talked about so totally. what i wanted to connect that to was um was joker oh okay joker cool. came out as being now the most profitable comic book movie but how much did it cost to make 62 million is it right and how many do pull in 950 million right but so you're like oh wow it's the most profitable but framing again yeah. it's like well how much did it cost to make marvel the marvel movie 200 and then how much do they make a billion so or so like you minus them are you talking about percentage wise yeah no profit wise profit yeah profit, from, profit uh, percentage or profit, profit, profit for, yeah profit profit, profit in general like from no no like based on how much it cost to make yeah they're removing that and how much it made above that right so so it's percentage? right now yeah yeah so right now, yeah, uh, Joker has become the most profitable. Relative to its cost. Yeah. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's the framing. It's yeah. like Marvel made way more money, right? 200, uh, 200 million. And it costs well, profit they wise, made 1 no. Billion. No. Yeah, yeah profit wise, no. Million. No, profit wise, no. They're saying profit right. wise. Okay. Profit wise, Joker no. made. Is that's what I'm asking? Is, is it profit percentage or is it profit margin? So is it like the actual number? You're talking about like making nine fifty million? Yeah. No. Profit. Okay, wait, wait. How much did Joker make? Nine hundred fifty million. Okay, and how much did? Um, Let's just say it's a, a billion. billion. Yeah. Nine hundred fifty. It's a billion. Okay. But it cost them two hundred. Yeah. To make, and then it cost Joker sixty-two million. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's what the I'm cost saying. was way less. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So this is well, it's still percentage. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Uh, that's it's a mix of both. Yeah. I was like, wait, wait, what? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I was like, yeah, two hundred billion is higher cost. No, right, right, right. But I was, I was saying oh. the difference. Okay. I was, I was trying uh, to calculate uh, the difference. Okay, in my head. okay. So the difference is still higher. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what I'm saying. Like that, the, the. This R sorry, this R oh, rated I, I movie so has in, become in terms of in terms of gross mm-hmm. in terms of gross profits um, gross revenue. Revenue sure. Re- so revenue is how much came in. Profit yeah. is revenue minus cost. So, well they're using the word profit. No no I, I know. They're different okay. though. I so, know they're different. Yeah. So so like revenue, even though You added in e- even it's though not... even though um, Marvel Avengers made more revenue. Yeah. At the end of the day, you're not removing Joker the made more profit. Yeah. 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 Fascinating. So like it's interesting to see that Joker ended up being that. Being an R rated movie. Yeah. And minus the fact that the most profitable. I've, minus the fact that I've heard they're not in China yet. Ooh, fascinating. China's another like possible if they ever release in there another two hundred million. So. What well, what's fascinating though is like it didn't it pulled in less revenue but made more profit. Yeah. So what this is telling us is it doesn't this is this it's is not about how much you put into a movie it's about what yeah. the movie's about it's more about story yeah than the quality. yeah uh, these are these oh, it's the quality uh, not the yeah exactly yeah. these are these are studios dream projects <laughs> yeah true 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 this is what they want <laughs> it cost us so little but made us so much back of yes. course yeah, yeah totally so it's very interesting to see that, that that joker i mean it's, what, what this really like tells it. me is stories drive sales oh yeah 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 that's true yeah that's what we've all been trying to ask for and uh, like we want a good story not just like a wow but i mean avengers was a pretty good story though it was a good story but again it, i don't think it pulled in enough like people that are outside of so like um the marvel movie even though it made a lot it was it was like geared towards comic book lovers, yeah. whereas Joker was more of a psychological thriller, which can which, be from a lot of people. Yeah, totally. You didn't have to watch all the previous movies to get this one movie. Yeah, you could just watch it as a standalone movie about a person having a mental breakdown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was interesting to uh, that that just came out that being the most profitable and being that it's R rated too. Did it? I did it beat it out? Um, did it beat out Titanic? No. Uh, the movie, no. Oh. How much did Titanic make? I think that is, they also do that based on revenue, I think. I don't know if they say profit, but uh, I don't know but how no, much. But no, but Avengers beat out Titanic, right? Avengers did beat out Titanic, yeah. Actually, Avatar beat out Titanic, right? Uh, 
think I heard that. Like, but they're both James Cameron. Yeah, so. I, um, they were both like one and two. I don't know which one, which way it was, but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then Marvel beat out both of them. Yep. Yeah, as the most uh, revenue generating movie of all time. Mm, yes. Yeah. But didn't they try and cheat? They tried to re-release it to get more revenue. But so did Avatar. It's yeah, not, no, one, no, no one, no one was, no one's cheating. <laughs> no, no. But what I'm saying is, like, Marvel didn't get re-released. It did. Oh, it did. Avengers got re-released in theaters. I think it did. Yes. Really? Yeah, they both did it. Oh. It's part of the game. Oh, I don't remember that. I think they did. Yeah, I remember. S- because it's so recent, why would you re-release Marvel? It's not recent. It's been some time. Oh, I feel whatever. Like. But yeah, so dope. See, I love that. There you go. It's like, it's all the devils and the details, as they mm-hmm. say. You know, it's like you gotta, you gotta break down what everything really means. Yeah. You know, because like on, on like the superficial and naive level, and everyone's like, oh, it's the most profitable. You're like, oh man, they must made like seventy five billion dollars. Oh, but it's like, no, no, it's not the most revenue generating. Yeah. It's like just how much did it cost? Like all that. There's you so know? many things involved. Yeah. But see, like if you hadn't studied that, how would you know? Yeah. I I truly believe that like business rules the world. It does. No, Actually, yeah. hands down, it does. Because um, I had this, I remember... I mean, I started, money. It's all about money, right? Money, right, it's yeah. Money's business. I remember having this uh, conversation back when I was studying marketing and my like mm. my um, my family was over and they were. I was like, oh, man, I'm having this revelation that like, business rules everything. Everything's about business, blah, blah, And then like, but they were studying mathematics, right? And they're like, they're like, well, if you want to look at... Everyone always says that, like, you know... Um, my field of study rules everything in this world because that, that's like your perspective right and they're saying like well i study math so technically you could say mathematics is everything <laughs> yeah you know it, it depends on what you're saying because like you have that bias of like my degree is the best degree mm-hmm. you know um i would say i would agree with them like looking at it now i would agree with, agree with them like mathematics is the nature of everything but what rules everything is business still you know because that's our nature. It's like trade is business. Yeah. It, it, that adds, it's everything. They need mathematics. You need math. No, but like even on like without mathematics, you still like, uh, you can calculate things mathematically. Like future without projections. Without math- mathematics? Yeah. Like I'm saying mathematics, you know, they say like mathematics is the language of the, the gods. Oh, okay. I don't know. You never heard that? I don't, that term? don't think so. Oh, okay. Well, scientists say that math is the language of gods. But the reason why is because you can ca- you can like convert everything to mathematics, right? Like everything can be a mathematical equation, mm-hmm. right? Um, I was so, just saying in the sense of numbers because business is around is, revolves around numbers also. So true, yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. That's what I was just saying. But I, I, I was viewing like, it that way. I meant more of like the universe is based on math. No, I know, I know. Yeah, right. Um, but like that's what I was I was viewing math in or that sense. Viewing compared. the universe through math. It's probably more accurate. Okay. Because math is the language we choose to describe the universe. Mm-hmm. Right? But think about it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. How do you, like, how do you figure out the propulsion of whatever, you know? Mm-hmm. How do you describe that future event, mathematics? Right. Right. But yeah, but what I'm saying is business rules everything we do because everything is based on trade. You're trading time, trading energy. Mm-hmm. And that trade stuff is calculated by math. It's true, too. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Math yeah, yeah, yeah. is the universe, but what rules everything is business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, so that was our nerd recap. Um, <laughs> is there anything? No movies next week, right? I don't know. Like, uh, I want to really Angels. I don't want to watch that. Really? Ah, I love it. <laughs> I love spy movies. I love those, like, Yeah, but it's... Uh, so, okay, the... Talking about that, it's more like, okay, I get it. You want to do, like, I do want to see that, like, you know, the good female lead roles and things like that, right? Mm-hmm. I guess I know what, like, I I see what they're trying to do, but it's like. Women empowerment? Yeah. yeah they did those Oceans 8. Yeah, but I, I agree with all that. But I'm like, why can't we have, like, it's like a different story? You're rehashing a story but oh, I see that what you're story yeah, yeah, done yeah, yeah. for you know before. It's right, like right. no, no. What I mean by that is like We're I'm, not, I'm not out of ideas. I'm not knocking that out. I'm just saying that why are we re- revamping it? Yeah, I'm. I'm saying like why don't we give like good female lead like roles like good right. stories for them? 
like you're rehashing sure, a story, yeah. so you're basically doing half the job. Right, right. Why don't you just create a really good story from scratch? Yeah. And then like really try and put everything in it because if you start from... Like I don't mind if it's all female characters or whatever. That's fine. But as long right. as the story is... But, but if, you, if you revamp something, you have the constraints of that revamp. Right? Because you're like, yeah. well, this person has this character and this character. Like you have constraints. Yeah. No, what, what you're saying is like have no constraints. Start from scratch. Yeah. You, you create the box rather than fitting but then to the, the box. Exactly. But what I'm, what I'm also trying to say is that like it's, it's half the job. It's like, okay, okay you want to have these people all in a female role or whatever, but you're doing half the job in the sense of, oh, there's already a story. Let's just switch all the characters and make them all female. Right. Right. So you're no, not no, even they were like, always female. Charlie's Angel was always female. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, like I was. I'm connecting it to um, Ocean's Eight. Ocean's. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the I was like because of the female leads, right? That's what I was. Thinking. So that right, is something right. or, that was kind of original at the time, and it was doing it did well. Ocean's Eleven. No, no, no. Uh, Charlie's Angel. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. 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 So like, uh, that's fine as a reboot, but it's not something I'm into. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I what you're saying so. like like stop being lazy is what you're saying. Yeah. Creatively lazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was a big a bit of both. It was like trying to say like you're revamping something that's already there, but then yeah, I feel you. Yeah, well, like, um, actually, I prefer new stories. Sorry, total segue, but Joe Rogan on the um, he was on the Chris Ryan like they're they're in podcast together. Um, Chris Ryan's like, oh yeah, this person, oh they also have a podcast, and then Joe Rogan's like, everyone's got a podcast, and I, <laughs> and I heard that in the car. I was like. We got a podcast, <laughs> you know. What I mean? Like, damn, everyone does have a podcast. But what what I'm thinking, because I was like, why does everyone have a podcast? Why is it so simple for everyone to have a podcast? Because a podcast is just a captured conversation. Yeah, people have conversations all the time. Remember, but like, we've been trying ago? to. No, right, right, right. But this is what I'm going to segue into. Like, remember how long I've been saying, like, if we just could we go on walks and we'd have this exact same conversation? Is, and yeah. I always say to you, why don't why we, don't record, we record this? this? <laughs> because then this would just be this literally a podcast, us walking and having the conversation yeah we should just record it and then we could just call it a podcast yeah you know what I mean? exactly so because like everyone's having conversations yeah but like there's there's this like necessity this is like need in us to want a legacy right to have something that lives on beyond us mm-hmm. right and i feel like so like as i was filming for the the trip mm-hmm. tara was like oh but are you here in this moment and I'm like, I'm actually probably more in this moment than you're in this moment because I have to pay attention to the moment to see what's important about this moment and then capture that moment. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it seems like, it's like, well, why can't you just have a conversation without recording it? No, it makes it better because you have to, like, focus on, like, like what is it I'm trying to say here? Because, like, even though we did have conversations on those walks, there'd be, like, a lot of times where we just silently walk together. Mm-hmm. You know, but there's no silence in this podcast. Right. So you're making it better than it is if you were just enjoying the moment, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Like, I don't think I don't think creatively capturing something diminishes from the quality of that experience so long as you're fully immersed in that experience. Like, I would say that, like, I, right. I'm immersed in this experience with you, having this podcast, having this conversation. Mm-hmm. We're just capturing it and calling it a podcast, you know? But, like... We have this incessant need for like legacy or something to live on beyond us, right? Because like, why can't you just enjoy it and let it go? It's like, well, because then I could record it and people can enjoy it in the future. Yeah, exactly. You know, true. Yeah, I feel like, but I feel like that's with all creative pursuits, and that's why I'm obsessed with producing creative things because mm-hmm. like it'll live on beyond me. Because even if I'm dead, people can still listen to this podcast. You know, as long as the digital cloud's not dead. You know, even though the trip is over, we can relive the trip. By making videos of the trip, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like uh, I went back and rewatched those other world tours that um, that we made, and like all this, all these memories got flooded back. And you're like, oh, I forgot all about that. Oh yeah, that mm-hmm. thing. And then this thing happened after that. You know, blah, 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 <laughs> right? right. But if you didn't have those videos, it's like they would just be in the ether. You'd be like, remember that time we did that thing? But I don't remember what we did. We just <laughs> did that thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. especially me. True, yeah. I mean, yes, but, yeah, true, true, true. Because you like to let things go. But yeah, um, everyone should have a podcast. Not that we listen to everyone's podcast, because like, I went to go try to watch like, other people's vlogs, and I was just like, nah, I can't do it. Because <laughs> it's not my life, right? Well, yeah, it depends, right? It, it, not everything's for everyone, right? There's, that's, totally. That's... And I'm sure like, if you watch my travel videos, you're like, oh, I can't watch it. Because it's not you, you know? Yeah. But it's like, I'm just authentically expressing my experience. Mm-hmm. 
you know, the best I can creatively. Right. You know. Yeah. That's all we can do, I guess. Right, yeah. And then people who jive with it, jive with it. So if you're listening to this, kudos to you. You're awesome. Yeah. And if you're not listening to this, haha, you'll never know that we hate you. Just <laughs> oh. kidding. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, all right. So until next week, um, maybe there'll be a movie. I'm not too sure. I have no idea what's going on. Unless I can rope Vish into watching um, Charlie's Angels. Doesn't that come out next week? I think it does. Oh, there you go. It's going to be good, yeah. Disney Plus comes out next week. Oh, okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> there, uh, there's a Star Wars show on there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mandalorian, right? Yeah. Mandalorian, yeah. yes. Bah. Okay. You, you know one thing... All right, so last thing. <laughs> you, you know one thing that this is really... Um, having this podcast really made me more comfortable with? Mm-hmm. Hearing my voice. You know, like, people, like, they record themselves like, ew, that's what I sound like? Oh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, no, you've never heard that before? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. No, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but, like, like listening, because I make these, these cuts and stuff, right? It's, yeah. like, made me very comfortable with being like, oh, that's my voice. You know? Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I was more, like, fascinated by how I sound. Too, right? It's just what I'm saying. Yeah, everyone's yeah. like, oh, that's my voice? Like, what? Didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's how everyone else hears me. But w- which is really weird. It's like to think that we wake up in our bodies. Like everyone's. So, like, okay, my first person experience. If you're listening to this, you're having your own first person experience. We're all having our first person experiences. Mm-hmm. But it's weird that, like, we're all having a first person experience. I'll never know what it's like to be you, Vish. Yeah. But your reality is just as real as my reality. Mm-hmm. But because they're both just as real and they're different, means that no reality is real. There's no such thing as reality. It cancels each other out. Do you okay. know what I'm saying? Yep, I think so. Because sure. if they're both not real, then what is real? Nothing. Exactly. What is the sound of one hand One clapping? cancels out the other. It's maths. Exactly. Yes. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's what I was trying to get at. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like when you're doing a proof in mathematics, mm. if, one, if left doesn't equal right, then it's not a real proof. Yeah. So... If my experience is not the exact same as your experience, left doesn't equal right. There is no truth. But there have is you? No but reality. have you heard? You know, one plus one is two. Is oh, it's eleven. Sorry, one. Wait, what? Wait, what? What was his thing? No, no, no. no. Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one plus one equals one. Oh, oh. Or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. One plus one doesn't equal two. One plus one equals one. Yeah. Is uh, Terrence Howard? Check that out. Trippy mind blow. His reality is definitely not the same as our reality. <laughs> There you go, though. Mathematics rules rules everything we do. Mm. Mathematics is everything we do, yeah. but economics rules everything we do. That's a new slogan right there. Okay. Quick maths. Wait, is that the song? You remember that song? Yeah. Yeah. Quick maths. One yeah. plus one. Two. What did it? I don't, I don't know. know. Whatever. Go check it out. Anyways. Anyways, till next time. Uh, same bad time, same bad channel. Have a good Peace. week. Peace. Bye.